So my name is right. Ekaterina and uh, today I'm presenting the results of the work, uh, the digital deafenoscopy in the diagnosis of maxillary sinus diseases for patients with different anatomical and gender features. Uh, so today there are no tools for quickly, painlessly and safely diagnosis of maxillary sinus pathologies in doctor's practice. And uh, our technology, technology of uh, digital deafenoscopy has potential for that. So uh, the method of digital deafenoscopy uh, consists of translucent maxillary sinuses by anatomically shaped LED applicator with uh, two radiation sources, uh, visualizing the scattering pattern of light by CMOS camera and uh, the following digital processing of obtained images by specialized software. In this slide, you can see an example of a study patient with cystic fluid. And uh, we can see that uh, the area of uh, sinus with pathology has a lower intensity compared to other structures on the result of digital diaphanoscopy. And um, uh, we compared our results with um, uh, results by MRI study. Uh, so also uh, during analysis of uh, obtained result, uh, we uh, noted that uh, there is a great uh, influence uh, of the anatomical and gender features on the uh, recorded scattering pattern of light. So uh, we, uh, in order to uh, justify a, a medical and technical requirements for our device, we uh, carried out a numerical simulation uh, of magnitude uh, of the um, um, uh, decrease in the signal which passes through uh, different biological layers uh, and um, uh, biological layers um, uh, and pathology, different pathology. Uh, so we uh, took into account the difference um, in um, anatomical features of uh, female and male and um, uh, set uh, four different thickness of um, uh, hypodermis, different thickness of mucous membrane and different sizes of uh, maxillary sinus uh, for uh, female and male. Also all optical um, coefficient we um, took from the literature. So in this slide, you can see the results of uh, simulation uh, for male uh, without pathology uh, in maxillary sinus uh, with the cystic fluid and with a tumor. Uh, as you can see, there is uh, a decrease in the signal in male and in female, while this decrease has a more pronounced character in the near and far range. Also, we can see that uh, the absorption of light uh, in male is higher than in female. Uh, then to um, uh, to conduct numerical simulation for case of uh, uh, purulent content uh, in the maxillary sinus, uh, we uh, measured the optical uh, coefficient uh, of this pathology by a spectrophotometer with an integral sphere model. And um, we can see that um, for determine this pathology, it's more informative to use the sources of radiation with 980 nanometers. So based on uh, this result, we carried out a numerical simulation uh, for this uh, wavelength uh, for different uh, pathologies, cystic fluid, tumor, and uh, pus. Uh, and uh, obtained results um, are confirmed to the results by uh, spectrophotometer. Uh, then we uh, um, noted that the optical power uh, also has a great influence on the re recorded scattering pattern of light. Uh, so we developed uh, the LED brightness controller uh, for selecting the necessary power for study um, male and female. And uh, in this slide, you can see the values of uh, brightness controller corresponded uh, with um, optical power of uh, LED applicator for two radiation sources. Uh, so uh, in order to determine uh, the required uh, values of optical power for study male and female, we carried out, uh, conducted our studies. 
uh, on um, uh, 30 healthy volunteers. And you can see that in a female study, uh, the um, uh, maxillary sinus were well visualized uh, in the controller volume uh, 50 and the camera exposure time uh, 40 milliseconds. While in male uh, study, uh, the controller volume was equal to 250 and uh, the camera exposure time uh, 60 milliseconds. Uh, so um, on the right of this slide, you can see uh, the corresponding uh, the required power for male and um, um, optical power for female. Uh, the next step was to develop an algorithm for classifying different pathologies. Uh, and um, uh, based on the literature analysis, we developed our algorithm. Uh, our al algorithm consists uh, of two stages. Uh, the first stage was to calculate the intensity parameter. It's the amount of light reaching the camera detector after absorption by different uh, biological layers and different pathologies. And uh, the second stage was to calculate uh, the coefficient k uh, by this formula. Uh, so the uh, values of intensity in the eye socket area and uh, in the sinus area um, were obtained by uh, image program. Uh, at the moment, we uh, conducted studies only for patients uh, with cystic fluid and uh, only for conditionally healthy volunteers. So uh, in this slide, you can see uh, the obtained limits of calculated parameters for um, these two cases. But in the future, uh, we are going to uh, set an experimental data for uh, patients with uh, various pathologies to clarify our parameters. And uh, it will allow us to um, to form a new diagnostic criteria. Also, we are going to develop a new LED applicator with uh, 980 nanometers uh, to study patients uh, with a uh, pass inside of maxillary sinus. Uh, so um, it's the end of my presentation. And uh, if you have some questions, I will be, hap uh, I will be happy to answer it. Uh, so thank you for your attention.